But 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world that is in the world through lust. That verse there in the first part of it said, we're given great and precious promises. In, not, in 1886, there's a man by the name of Russell Carter who's in the military and having some very scary times. Back when they were scared for their own lives in the army, in the war, and he wrote a song called Standing on the Promises of God. Most great songs and preaching and everything come, don't come out of good times. They come out of hard times. You'll grow in hard times way more than you do when everything's going good. And so he wrote that song, Standing on the Promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the high, I'll shout and sing, Standing on the Promises of God, like we sang earlier this morning. Now, I want to preach on that subject. That would be my title today, Standing on the Promises. Thousands and thousands and thousands of God's people down through the years have withstood persecution, endured sickness, fought battles from and with family and, and, and neighbors, attacks from the devil, and stood faithful all because they clinged to and stood on the promises of God. Nowadays, you you describe the average church now not as standing on the promises, they're sitting on the premises uh, and doing absolutely nothing. But the Bible teaches us that we have exceeding great and precious promises. Now, you know something? If, if, if somebody promises you something, sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. If a person, if your neighbor promises something, sometimes you'll get it and sometimes you won't. I'm going to tell you something. When God Almighty gives you a promise, you can take it to the bank, people. I mean, it's good. He'll stand by His promises. And so I'd like to say, first, we're to stand on the promises of God's protection. Protection. Uh, years ago, back in 1950, uh, March the 1st, on a cold Saturday evening in Beatrice, Nebraska, there was a little church met every Saturday night to have choir practice at, at uh, 730 for some reason, this cold Saturday evening, things went a little bit different. The pastor, who was always there early to make sure everything was on, the lights were on, the, the heat was warm enough, they already had the heat in the building, and um, uh, was there uh, and, and stayed for, usually got there at 7.15, had, um, had uh, gone to eat with, it, with his daughter and, was gonna, and it made him late getting there. His daughter's dress and food at another choir member's family spilt food on her dress and they had to change her and it made that family late. One high school girl who was always early for choir practice had a geometry class test on Monday and stayed home that evening to study it. Two more sisters who were always there, car would not start and so they didn't make it. Another lady who never missed choir practice, her mother called and needed her to help her do something and went over to help her mother. Another lady just felt unusually tired for some reason and she didn't make it. A man and two boys got into a deep conversation about life and, and how serious life is and made them late. The piano player fell asleep and woke up late and made her late for choir practice that evening also. And two more high school students were late for some kind of problem on the way there. And at 725 that evening, a gas leak came out of that building, filled it up, and something clicked on and ignited it and blew that church into a million pieces. And they said it just smelled and not there was not one person in there that day. It got put in the newspaper. Everybody's talking about how that God protected 
that little congregation. We need to stand on the promises of God's protection. I don't think our building's about ready to blow up today, but I'm telling you, in the day we're living in, these kids living in, we need to learn how to stand on the promise, God protect me. God protect me. Not, not, not maybe some physical, but spiritual. Wow. These kids need to be protected of the society that they're having to grow up in. They are being bombarded with junk that's against the Bible from the time they're that high. I mean, little kids seven, eight years old are being, they're, they're questioning their own gender. I mean, we didn't know there was such a thing when I was seven or eight years old. Uh, they're, they're, this stuff is indoctrination uh, being put into our kids now to question everything. Brother Derek covered it up over, over here a while ago. Infidels laughing at the Bible and making money. We need to stand on the promise of God's protection. God, will you protect my family? God, will you protect me? I've heard this story uh, years ago during during the war. Uh, some of our troops we had lost some land, our claim to it, and somehow or another, the United States troops took back over this piece of land and got it in our in our in our cust in our uh, control. And there's a big old flagpole over there. And the general told some of these men, he said, men, we've taken over this land. We need somebody to take the American flag and go up that pole and put it on. And everybody looked around like, you know, looked around like, you know, I don't know tell you know, they're still fighting, bullets flying everywhere. And uh, finally, this one old redneck boy from Arkansas who had been in the army there for a while, he jumped up and said, I'll do it. I'll do it, sir. And they said, great. You know, he said, I'll do it, sir. He said, you got to give me about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and I'll do it. So, they go, oh, okay. They didn't understand what he's talking about. They waited 20 minutes. When that 20 minutes was over, they gave that flag to that boy. That boy took that thing, run out across that field, and everybody said, I can't look. Bullets are flying everywhere. Going to step, step on one of them landmines, blowing the kingdom come. He run up there and went right up the flag, just pretty as you please, and tied that flag up there on top of that pole and came back down. They cheered. They clapped. Wow! I never seen such bravery. I never seen such. And you know what? One of them looked. They said, "Well, he said, man, I just got one question. What's up with that twenty minutes? Why'd you have to wait twenty minutes before you?" And he said, "I will tell you why." He said, "My mom's a Christian." He said, "My mom knows God." And he said, "My mom told me before I left. She said, son, every day at four thirty, I'm going to be on my knees praying that God will protect you." And he said, it's just about 4.30 back Arkansas time. And boy, I mean, tell you, he said, I knew nothing couldn't happen to me with mama praying. I'm going to tell you something this, evening, uh, this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Are you listening to me? The same God that took care of Noah through the ark, the same God that took care of Daniel in the lion's den, the same God that preserved the Hebrew children through the fire, the same God that got Paul and Silas out of jail is the same God that we're up here singing about this morning. I know we're living in 2023, but it's time that we learn how to stand on the promise of God's protection. Lord, take care of you. The Lord, take care of you. Everything may not go exactly like you want it to all the time, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you will. I heard about this old fella, uh, you've heard me tell about Maze Jackson, told about it, and he said this old boy named Harvey Phillips, and he said Harvey was a prayer warrior. Now, years ago, people, churches used to have what they call prayer warriors. You don't know, you don't know. Ain't no such thing hardly no more. There might, there's some of the old saints of God left, but they're dying off. And he said, Harvey prayed all the time. He said he just got under up praying, Lord. Just moving his lips, talking to the Lord, talking to the Lord all the time. And he said uh, their boy was in a in a submarine off the coast of California, uh, uh, doing some work to keep the Japanese from planting stuff in, in, in the ocean and, and maybe uh, having submarines pointed toward uh, the coast of California. And he was on a dangerous mission, very dangerous mission, uh, un unmanning the uh, mines and stuff. And he said uh, he had a revival one night. And on Monday night, he said that revival was just tight and dead. It just wasn't nothing happening. And he said he couldn't understand what was going on. And he said the next night they came back, and it was just tight and dead. And nobody got saved. Nothing happened good. And he said, I, he said, I just don't know what's going on. He said, went back to the house that night. And he said, Harvey and his wife was talking. And Harvey looked at her, and he said, I know what's wrong with you, honey. You're worried about our boy, ain't you? She said, yes. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I'm just worried sick. I can't believe. And he said, Harvey said, all right. Next morning he got up and he said, I'm going to the woods. Don't look more for lunch. Don't look for me for supper. And he grabbed that Bible and took off the woods. Same Bible them Waldensians brought over there. 
that, same, that King James Bible that he had in his hand, he took that thing out there in them woods and stayed all day long. And he stayed all day long that evening. He, they said about 5 o'clock that evening, they was getting ready for church. Harvey came back in and went, Woo! He said, I heard him. He said, he's all right. He's going to be all right. And his wife said, Now, Harvey, calm down here. Don't you dare go to church tonight and tell everybody. He said, he is. He said, I heard from heaven. My boy's all right. He said, Harvey, don't you dare go down there and tell them people think you're crazy. Uh, don't go down there and acting like that. And he said, everything's all right. I'm telling you. Well, he went to church. Sure enough, that night, told everybody. He said, Lord told me, my son's all right. People, thank you for praying. And uh, his wife said, oh, my goodness. I can't believe he got up there and said that. And uh, she thought, he, you know, how a lot of times preachers' wives are scared Kelly does me like that sometimes. She said, are you sure, Anna? Uh, she's talking to him about this AI and stuff. She said, Brother Danny, are you? Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I'll be all right. Uh, and, uh, and, and they went the next, the next, uh, next day, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They was getting ready to have supper to go back for the uh, uh, fourth night of the revival. And he said, uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, didn't have phones back in them days. He said, a knock came at the door. They opened the door, and it was a Western Union man. And he said, that man opened the door. He said, I have a telegram from Mr. and Mrs. Harvey uh, Phillips. And Harvey said, I know what it was when I got it. And she was scared to death. She thought, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And she opened it up, and it says, all is well. The ship has docked. Your boy's okay. Mom and Dad, I love you. I'll see She went, wow! She started shouting. She jumped around, clapped her hand, said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the way the old people used to do. I don't know what's wrong with some of you old people nowadays. That's the way they used to do. They used to shout. It's in the Bible, too. And you know what? She doesn't know. said, whoa, I got to tell her. And she said, Harvey, why ain't you shouting? He said, I got my shouting done yesterday. I got my telegram from heaven uh, before you ever done that. And I'm telling you, you know what he found out? You know what they found out? They could stand on the promise of God's protection. Hey, uh, do we believe what we say we believe? He's able to protect us. Amen? Even in the midst of the Wuhan flu, in the, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of persecution and politics gone crazy and morals gone to the devil and preachers turning crooked as a dog time leg. Our God in heaven this morning is still able to protect us. Stand on the promise of God's protection. Secondly, I'll say this quickly this morning. We need to stand on the promise of God's provision. Stand on the promise of God's provision. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just don't know what's going to happen. I don't either. But I'll tell you one thing. I know he's able He's able to provide for us. We read about George Mueller, the great George Mueller, who read the Bible through 200 times, 100 on his knees, and run those orphanages over there and kept raised, uh, I don't know how many kids, and raised over a million dollars and never took up an offering. That was 1800s, that was a lot of money. And George Mueller would get down on his knees, and they said he'd pray, and God would send it in. He'd pray, and God would send it in. I'm telling you, people, you can read their diary. You can read their life story. There were times when the kids would all be brought in and sat down at the table, and they didn't have nothing to eat, and sit there for breakfast. And he, Mr. Mueller would stand up there, and he'd say, everybody bow your head. We're going to thank God for the food. And there wasn't no food. That's how close it got. You see, sometimes the Lord will let it get down right to the edge. To test you to see if your faith's real. You ever been there? You ever been there on your bills and something like that? You say, like, oh boy, I don't know. I mean, I know he loves me and everything, but. Uh. And he said, that, Father, we thank you for this food we're about to eat. And they said, when that man got through praying, somebody knocked at the door. And they opened the door, and the man said, I don't understand it, but I got this load of wheat and, 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 and vegetables, and I was taking them some of those, and God told me to come up here and give it to y'all. And they set it out there, and they'd have uh, fix a meal, they'd fix biscuits and gravy. And, Probably had liver must and everything else. Uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. You know what they found out? You can stand on the promise of God's provision. You know what the Lord did in the Old Testament when they didn't have nothing to eat? He rained down manna from heaven. Man did eat angels' food, is what the Bible says. And God took care of it. You say, well, that was in the Old Testament. Guess what? During the tribulation, he's going to do that again. For Israel that's fleeing from the Antichrist, when the Antichrist goes into the temple and declares himself to be God, that's the abomination of desolation. And when he stands there and says, everybody, they're going to flee again 
That's what that scripture means when it says, Woe unto them uh, that are with child and give suck. In that day, they're going to be running the Antichrist. And the Bible says God's going to take care of them three and a half years, just like he did back yonder. He'll find food from heaven to them. And I'm going to tell you something this, this morning. My pastor used to say, God will put the angels on half rations uh, before he'll let one of his kids do without. If he's going to... Now, sometimes God allows persecution like we heard about this morning, the burning stakes, starving to death, stuff like that. And he does that for a reason, for martyrs. But listen, God is able to provide for you. He knows what your electric bill is. He knows what your grocery bill is. He knows what you need. He's able to take care of you. I don't know if you're hurting this morning, if you're having marriage trouble, whatever your need is, I'm standing on the promise of God's provision. Ask God to give you a good, a good home. Ask God to give you, I mean, ask the Lord to give you His pr provision to take care of you. Thirdly, quickly, I'm going to say, stand on the promise of God's presence. Stand on the promise of God's presence. You say, well, sometimes I just feel like the Lord ain't here, preacher. Listen to what he said. Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's a promise. He cannot break a promise. He said, I will not leave you alone. I will never. People say, well, I just felt like the Lord just left me alone. You, know, you might leave him. You might get away from him. But he ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to leave you. Amen. Stand on the promise of God's presence. I remember uh, Johnny, Johnny Erickson Potty. Y'all you know who she is. That girl that uh, was in that swimming accident when she was young. And all these years, she, she's tried to help people, encourage them. And, and uh, she said, uh, she said she read that scripture where it says, His eyes on the sparrow. You remember they used to sing that? His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. One sparrow don't fall to the ground without your heavenly Father. Even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows all of that. And she said, you know what? God didn't say eagle. God didn't, he didn't say his, his eyes on the great eagle. God didn't say his eyes on the wise old owl. It didn't say God was on it. Just that little sparrow. Little insignificant bird that nobody care about. I said, my eyes on that sparrow right there. You know what? That helps somebody like me. Because I, no, I ain't no eagle uh, a preacher. I ain't no important. The world never know my name, and I couldn't care less. They don't, I'll never be on TV preaching or, or I'll, uh, unless they're trying to twist my words and use them against me. I've never, I've never been known in this world, but you know what? His eye is on little sparrow, Brother Danny. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I don't know about you, but that means something to me this morning. Glory to God, people. We have something to shout about. His eyes on it. You're not insignificant in his sight. You're not a, a nobody. A, a Corey Tinboom. You, you know the story, or you should know the story of Corey Tinboom, who used to give her testimonies in those Billy Graham crusades and, and made that movie, The Hiding Place, one of the most amazing stories uh, that I've heard in my life. You want something that'll touch your heart. Uh, get that, that video they made of, of the hiding place. And her and her families, the Tin Booms, would hide Jews in Holland when the Germans in Holland to take those Jews. And they hid them because they knew they were God's earthly people. And the Tin Booms were arrested. And they hauled her daddy off. I don't know, she never didn't know what ever happened to him. I'm sure he was killed or, or let die. And her and her sister Betsy were in torture camps for I forget how many years and under the most unbelievably hard conditions. And Corey Tin Boom said, she said, those guards would wake them up early in the morning. She said, we didn't have anything. We didn't have anything to eat. So they said, well, our, our bodies would be hurting. And she said they'd march us out there and it'd be freezing cold below below uh, freezing temperatures. And me and I said, we'd just stand there and shiver. And she said that guard was so mean, he got a kick out of seeing us suffer and cry. And she said, I looked out there and she said, the devil said, God don't care about you. God don't care about you. He's left you. And she said, I stood there shivering like this. And my sister and all of us ladies were out there morning after morning. And she said, one morning I looked up. And there's a little skylark landed on a wire above me. And she said, that little skylark started singing. And it started singing. Started, and she thought, how beautiful that little skylark is. And she said, it was like the Lord used that little skylark to say, you know what? I'm with you. My presence is here. You may be going through it. My son went through it. 
You might be even persecuted. My son was persecuted. You might get betrayed. You might get killed. My son was killed. But I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. And you know what she said? She said for three solid weeks, she went out there. And every morning, that little bird would come and light on that light, uh, light that wire and sing to her. And she said it was like God said, I am with you, Corey. I am going to bless you. I've not left you. I'm not, and I'm going to tell you this morning, people, if there's ever been a time when we need to know God's with us, it's a day we're living in. And a lot of people losing their faith. See, if all you do is watch TikTok, Besides lowering your IQ, it also make an atheist out of you. It's demonic. There's a demonic spirit in it. it. comes from China, you know. China gives us all these wonderful gifts like fentanyl and the Wuhan flu. And, and fentanyl, don't get me started. Uh, and then I want to tell you something this morning, people. Listen, uh, do you know, do you know the kids in, in China aren't allowed to watch TikTok? America, we're the only one dumb enough to let kids see filth like that. And, but, you know, they, they have their own version of it. It's educational. And uh, anyway, and you know something? That, that thing, that, that thing is, is, it will make an atheist out of you. Because you see all these videos of these slick, smart, educated people laughing. And what American Christians cannot take is ridicule. I've been pastoring all my life, people. I've been pastoring church long most of y'all have been alive. I'm a dinosaur, brother. Don't even come in. Somebody said, but Brother Danny, the Lord sure has preserved you. No, I'm pickled. <laughs> I'm in a jar. Like, listen, I, I didn't start this yesterday, and I know what Christians cannot take in this part of the country. Ridicule. Scared to death, somebody going to laugh at them. That's some of you sitting right here. I'm good not. I'm not going out there in the street. Well, these people might. I'm not seeing, oh my, bless your with a heart. You need to go back to that trail of faith, cross the road over there, and, and see what them people, it's not going to hurt you if somebody laughs at you. If you give somebody a track and they throw it down and stomp on it, you know what you ought to do? Instead of going, I'm never going to do this again. I <laughs> say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm on your side and you're on mine. Stand on the promise of God's presence. And then finally, and I'm through this morning, stand on the promise of God's promotion. Stand on the promise. You know, we're going to get promoted one day. You know that, right? That's the end game for this we're going to talk about here. Amen. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day. Glorious day that will be. The Lord ain't going to leave us. You seen all them videos that people are putting out now? They pop up on my phone. People send me stuff all the time. And uh, 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 and I, I look at it. And uh, you've know, seen all them videos where they're saying, if, if, a, if a millions of Christians go missing, y'all, just remember, it wasn't the UFOs didn't get us. That's what they're going to say. But that, you have, that's the way it's going to be explained away. Some of them things land and all super humanoid hybrid Oh, uh, uh, weird, about 12 foot tall, steps out, has an answer to the world's problems, can heal every kind of disease. He was it with signs and lying wonders. Lying wonders. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. They're going to have all those signs and miracles. I try to imitate Jesus. I'm telling you, they've bad days ahead for this world. They've bad days ahead, people. It ain't going to get better. It's getting worse. You say, well, Brother Danny, I worked hard all week long, and I didn't come to church to hear doom and gloom. Nope, you ain't, I ain't through yet. Uh, for the child of God, there is no dark picture. For the child of God, it's bright up ahead. One of these days, that trumpet will sound. And the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Up from the gravesides of the quiet valleys they'll be under. The, the people that he was talking about a while ago, their bodies will literally come out of those graves, reassemble. God's going to bring their souls with him. The dead in Christ rise first. That ain't talking about the Methodist. That's talking about people that's died in the Lord, their body. And they're going to come up like this right here. And we're going to be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, don't talk to me about being doom and gloom. We're the only ones that's got a bright future. The world's got the doom and gloom. It's getting worse. There ain't no hope for it. The, the AI is already telling them that they're going to become extinct. 
the human race will become extinct and they're going to take over robots rule the world. That ain't going to happen. We know what's going to happen. Up from the village burying ground. Up from the sunny hillside. Up from the depths of the sea. All those soldiers that were died in battle. Up from the, the, the swamps of Africa. From the islands of the sea. A radiant host of resurrected saints of God will rise together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Stand on the promise of this promotion. You ever, you ever went to school and fooled around? I, you know, I played basketball in high school. and I'd fool around all year long, and we'd try real hard at the last just to make sure we passed. And my teacher said, I was smart. And I said, that's right. That's why I don't want to learn French. And, and she said, uh, Danny, you are so smart. You could learn French. I said, yeah, I know, but why, why, why would I want to? Somebody from France comes here, they can learn English and talk if they want to talk to me. I, I give her a hard time like that. And, uh, and I'd, I'd make sure that I, and you know, it's always a good feeling when you got that report card and it said, promoted. Sometimes you fool around there, you start a little fear. And I said, ooh, man, I've been making some D's and E's. And I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to. And you open that thing and said, promoted. Well, guess what? Guess what? When you got saved, your name, is in God's it checks promoted. Now it ain't happened yet, but we're gonna graduate, buddy. <laughs> we're gonna graduate. There ain't no graduates walking around down here. I know some people think they've arrived, but there's no graduates walking around down here. We're all students. We're all just students. But graduation day's coming. What a day. What a day that'll be. I don't know what your need is this morning. I really don't. Come on, Miss Desi. And I don't know what you're going through. You may be struggling with addiction. I talked to a girl the other night at the revival. And she said, I'm not on no hard drugs. She said, I'm on Suboxone really bad pain pill. So a train run over her arm right here. And they, for some reason, when a train stops them, they'll go lay underneath them. I think the devil tells them to do that. But I guess get out of the rain or something. And train run over her arm right here. And I don't see how she didn't lose it. And she got it all bandaged up right here like that. And she said, and I told her, her name is Angie. I said, Angie, the Lord can help you. The Lord can help you. And she may be sitting there thinking, like some of you here this morning, there ain't no hope for me. I'm shot. I'm going to tell you this morning, there is hope for every single person in this room. If you lie, if you're breathing, there's hope for you. Stand. Learn how to stand on God's promises. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed today. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, might be someone here today. Maybe there's someone here this morning. Maybe there's someone here this morning. Something's already come to this altar. Maybe you're a teenager. Maybe you're a mom or a dad. And you're going to say, you know what, Lord? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to stand on your promise. I've been worried and scared and doubting you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Come on, just slide out of your seat. Come on, let's pray. Come on. Come on, young man. That's right. Come on, teenagers. Somebody come pray with these boys. Somebody come pray with these young people over here. This man right here. One of you men, gentlemen, pray with this guy here. Amen. Come on, yeah, yeah. One of you ladies, pray with her. Let God speak to somebody's heart this morning. Let God speak to your heart. This is the invitation. We're not going to sing. I'm just going to remain in prayer here just a few seconds. Maybe there's a mom or dad. Maybe there's a husband and wife want to uh, commit your marriage to the Lord. Maybe there's somebody here said, I need to make a new fresh start, preacher. I need to make a fresh start. And I'm going to come to that altar this morning. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on, right now. This is invitation. We're not going to tarry long. We're not going to wait. God's speaking to your heart. You feel free to come right now. Come on. Come on. Slide right out of your seat. Make your way down here. Make your way down here. Make your way down here. And let the Lord help you this morning. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Someone else. Someone else. If you'd like to come, make that public this morning. You come right now. We're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this morning, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your promises. And Lord, help us in these dark days and difficult times and hours. To learn to stand on your promises. God, do what ought to be done this morning. I pray for all the people watching from home and online. That you might bless them. 
Lord, please bless them today. Give them faith. Lord, help us to have our faith in you and your word. Have you in our heart. Bless all these on the altar this morning. Give them that that they need. I pray for that one that's having marriage troubles here this morning that you'd help him to claim your promise. I pray for that one that's struggling with drug addiction or maybe some maybe some face prison time, no telling help. What is in here today? I pray that you'd help them to stand on your promises. Lord, we know that that don't mean that everything's always going to go like we want it. That don't mean we won't be persecuted. That don't mean we may be called upon to give our life. I don't know. But Lord, we know you have to stand on that promise. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. It'll be done here this morning. Touch every heart and every life. Meet back here with us this evening. Get glory and honor to yourself. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. She's still playing. Some are still praying up here. Some are still praying. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We'll stop right there. Amen. Get your hearts clear. See, the, the devil, the world, try to steal your faith.